Hi there, mathematicians. Let's get started with trimester 2, section 5.1, which is all about angles of triangles. All right, our objectives are classify triangles by sides and angles. Second objective is to find interior and exterior angle measures of triangles. And as I said, we are starting trimester 2, which means you're starting your new interactive notebook. So we're starting our notes on page 20. 22, 24, and 26. And if you need textbook references, you can go to pages 236 through 239. And just a reminder, they are available on the class website. And for this round of uh, website folders, I created a textbook um, folder. So all textbook pages for chapter five are gonna be in the same folder, which is a little bit different than the previous unit. All right, let's move to our essential question. Our essential question for this section is how are the angle measures of a triangle related? So that's going to hopefully be answered by the end of this lesson. All right, so first things first, some vocabulary. So we want to be able to um, use some different methods to classify triangles. So one method is to classify triangles by congruent sides. So one of our types of triangles that we could classify are the scalene. And that means it's scalene when there are no congruent sides. So as you can see by looking at the picture, our visual over here to the right, we can see that we have a triangle ABC and no side is the same length. And we can write a statement with not symbols through the congruence symbols. And so we read it, segment AB is not congruent to segment BC, which is not congruent to segment AC. So no sides are the same as a scalene triangle. And we have some new implied statements. So get familiar with your new implied statements. So if it is a scalene triangle, then the triangle, the triangle is with no congruent sides, is how you read your implied statements. Next, you have your isosceles triangles, and at least two congruent sides occur on an isosceles. And we can indicate that with equal marks on all sides that are congruent. In this particular triangle, it's this side and this side that have the single markings indicate that they're congruent. And then side BC is not congruent. It does not have the same marks. And we can say that AB, segment AB is congruent to segment AC. Therefore, it is an isosceles. So if an isosceles triangle, then triangle with two congruent sides. And our last classification is the equilateral triangle, and it has all three sides congruent. As indicated by looking at this picture, we have all three equal congruent marks, concluding that segment AB is congruent to segment BC, which is congruent to segment AC. Our implied statement, if it is a triangle, equilateral triangle, then the triangle has three congruent sides. We can also classify triangles by their angles. So we have an acute triangle, and what that means is there are three acute angles, and as indicated in our picture, angle A is an acute angle, angle B is an acute angle, and angle C is an acute. So all three angles are less than 90 degrees, therefore it is an acute triangle. So implied statement, if it is an acute triangle, then the triangle is with three acute angles. Next classification is the right triangle, and it means that there is one right angle, as indicated by our picture, and we have our box in the corner indicating that it's a right triangle as well. We know that already from previous geometry. And we would classify this triangle as a right triangle. So right triangle implies that the angle, the triangle is with one right angle. Then you have an obtuse triangle, and that means it has one obtuse angle. You can see by this picture, we have the obtuse angle here at angle B. That means it's greater than 90 degrees, which means that the other two angles must be acute. There's no way to have more than one obtuse angle in any single triangle. So always in an obtuse triangle, the other two angles must be acute. So our implied statement, obtuse triangle, implies triangle with one obtuse angle. Then our last classification by angles is our equal, equal angular triangle, and that means it has three congruent angles. And that just means that all three angles are the same. 
And we know that the total interior angle sum is 180 degrees. So if we take 180 and divide by three equal angles, that means each angle is 60 degrees. So equal angular triangle implies triangle with three congruent angles. All right, with this example two, we wanna take a look at classifying a triangle in the coordinate plane. So we can classify triangle OPQ by its sides, then determine whether it is a right triangle. So first we would want to classify by sides, which means we would need to know the length of each side. If you'll recall from unit one, in order to find length in a coordinate plane, and our lengths are going across diagonally, we're gonna to have to use our distance formula. So definitely have your distance formula handy right now to refresh your memory on the formula, especially if you don't remember it. And you can look at your formula chart, which is located on page five and six of your trimester one interactive notebook. So if you need to pause to retrieve your formula chart, otherwise keep on going. All right, so we need to find the length of each side. So we're gonna set up our equations first. And we'll start with the length of side OP. So I've written or typed out the distance formula here. And next step would just be to substitute values that are located in the picture, which means you've substituted your P coordinate values. So negative one minus, and then your O coordinate values, which is at the origin zero, zero. So you have negative one minus zero inside the first parentheses squared plus, and then substitute your y values into the second parentheses, so two minus zero squared. Please note that the red values go with coordinate P and the blue values are going with coordinate O. And using order of operations, all of that simplifies to square root five. And if you type that into the calculator, it will come out to be approximately two decimal two. All right, so let's move on and figure out the lengths of the other two sides of the triangle. So use your distance formula to figure out the other two sides. You can pause the video, try on your own, or you can keep going and all of the solution will be revealed for each of the next two sides. All right, we can see that the length of OQ using the distance formula comes out to be nine radical five which is approximately 6.7 when you type it in the calculator. And the length of PQ is square root of 50, which is approximately 7.1. So none of the lengths are the same, which means we can conclude that it is a scalene triangle. So now we need to move on to see if it is a right triangle. So in order to find out if it's a right triangle, we need to compare the sides that we think appear to be forming a right angle, in other words, appear to be perpendicular, and see what kind of slopes they both have. And then when we multiply the two slopes, the product should be negative one. If the product is not negative one when we multiply the two slopes, then we can conclude that it's not perpendicular. So what is the slope of OP? Well, it looks like we can see that from O, we can go up one, two, left one, so it has a negative two slope. And the slope of OQ is going up one, two, three, and then to the right, one, two, three, four, five, six. So up three, right six gives us three six, which simplifies to one half, and it is going in the positive direction. So we have a slope of negative two and a slope of one half. When you multiply these two slopes, does the product come out to be negative one? And it does, so therefore we can conclude that this is a right angle at O. So here's all the work to confirm our two slopes and some proper notation and symbols that help us write and communicate with symbols and words. So in conclusion, we can conclude that this triangle OPQ is a right scalene triangle. So our first objective is complete. By watching this much of the video, we should be able to classify triangles by either sides or their angles. Our next objective is to find interior and exterior angle measures of triangles. 
All right, next we want to look at finding angle measures of triangles. So let's cover two more vocabulary words. The first vocabulary is interior angles, and these are the angles that are inside of the triangle. So we can see by this image of triangle ABC in which all of the sides have been extended to create angles on the outside. But for interior angles, we're focused on the angles that are on the inside. So when the sides of a polygon are extended, other angles are formed. The original angles are the interior angles, which is what we see highlighted in red. And then the exterior angles are the ones that form linear pairs with the interior angles. And angles between the sides of the triangle and an extended side are the ones that the, are the exterior angles. And we can see the highlighted angles in blue. Again, when you extend the side of the triangle, you form an exterior angle. Every side of a polygon can be extended, therefore creating this exterior angle on all three sides. And then we just need to note that the angles that form the linear pairs with the interior angles are the exterior angles. So an interior angle and its adjacent exterior angle form a linear pair. And if you remember from unit one, a linear pair implies supplementary. So we see two angles, the interior angle added to the exterior angle is going to be 180 degrees forming a linear pair. All right, so let's take a look at our first theorem of the new chapter. It's called the triangle sum theorem. And basically it's the sum of the interior angles of a triangle is 180 degrees which is knowledge that you already have and may or may not have known that it was a theorem. So our implied statement is sum of angles in a triangle implies 180 degrees. So let's take triangle ABC and just further understand this idea. By cutting off each angle and putting them side by side, we can see that if I cut off angle A, if I were to just tear this angle off, and if I were to tear angle B off of the triangle, and then I tear angle C off of the triangle and put them side by side, we can see that the, um, they form a straight line. And since each angle is adjacent to each other, measure of angle 1 is adjacent to measure of angle 2, which is adjacent to measure of angle 3, we see that it's a straight line. And we know that straight line angles are 180 degrees. So measure of angle A plus measure of angle B equals 180 degrees. This is your triangle sum theorem. So now let's take a look at a proof of the triangle sum theorem. You're given that triangle ABC and you're trying to prove that the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3 equals 180 degrees. So we need to make a plan for our proof before we start our proof. So we know that if we just are looking at a triangle ABC we're going to need to draw an auxiliary line through B that is parallel to segment AC, so the side of the triangle that represents AC. So after sketching the auxiliary line through vertex B, here's our auxiliary line through vertex B, we know that this auxiliary line is going to be parallel to segment AC. We also can see after we sketch in this auxiliary line that we've got this exterior angle, we'll call it 4, and this exterior angle, and we'll call it 5, to what was already here, and we'll call this angle 2. So this was angle 1, measure of angle A is the same as angle 1, measure of angle B, which is now angle 2, and C that we'll call 3. So our next step will be to show that measure of angle 4 plus the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 5 equals 180 degrees. And we want to then also conclude that angle 1 is congruent to angle 4 and that angle 3 is congruent to angle 5. And we can say that because of parallel lines cut by a transversal. So we have alternate interior angles. So 4 and 1 are alternate interior angles. 5 and 3 are also alternate interior angles. And so then by ultimately... Using substitution, we can say that measure of angle 1 plus measure of angle 2 plus measure of angle 3 is going to equal 180 degrees. So now we just need to put all of this plan and our picture can help us formalize our proof. 